We all code switch, but some examples are more effective than others. Okay, let's be real honest. Obama would not be president if he didn't know how to effectively code switch. Obama out. He's really adept at reading his audience. Wagwan, Jamaica. And then putting forth an American English that they can relate to. So what is code switching? Okay, so code switching, let's keep it really simple. Code, so we can think language and switching. So going back and forth between one language and another or one dialect and another. Meet Professor Renee Blake. I am an associate professor in the Department of Linguistics at New York University. I'm also in the Department of Social and Cultural Analysis and the Director of Africana Studies. Say that three times fast. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> Code switching is the norm for all of us. So if you just think about whether it's a formal situation versus an informal situation, we're gonna be code switching. Usually people think of it in terms of language. So here I am speaking, and I'm speaking not only with words, but I'm also speaking with my face, I'm speaking with my hands. But code switching often has higher stakes for black people. I think it's clear why black people specifically feel the need to code switch. This is Taryn Finley. She's the editor of HuffPost Black Voices. Our blackness isn't accepted in a lot of spaces that are um, critical for our success and our survival. A lot of times we have to dilute and we have to put on a mask. It's a bigger leap for someone who speaks African American English versus someone who speaks uh, a language that is closer to mainstream English, the language of those in power. But when a black person can't effectively code switch, the result can be catastrophic. The 2013 George Zimmerman trial was a painful reminder of that fact. He was charged with second-degree murder in the shooting of Trayvon Martin. Rachel Gentel was the prosecution's star witness and a close friend of Martin's. And when she testified, she was not code switching. I asked him how the man looked like. He looked like a creepy ass cracker. She took the stand and it became clear that the public wasn't judging the facts of her story. They were judging her language. I don't think she came across as brutally honest. I think she comes across as brutally ignorant. Every time she opens her mouth, her credibility gets chipped away and chipped away. Ultimately, Zimmerman walked free. But the ability to code switch isn't always enough to avoid disaster. Case in point, Sandra Bland. Bland was stopped for failing to signal a lane change. Oh, you seem very irritated. I am, I, I really am. She's speaking a form of standard or mainstream English. Step not, out of the car. But yet, the conversation escalates and goes badly very quickly. Drag me out of my own car. Get out of the car! Right. And then you I will light me? you up, get out! Wow. Now! Wow. Get out of the car! Right. For a failure to signal, you're doing all of this for Get over to... there. And so here what I think is happening and what we seem to understand is that there's something about the black expression that is different or can be misconstrued. Despite her ability to code switch, Bland was arrested. She was later found dead in her jail cell. Our blackness inherently says trouble in a lot of white spaces and a lot of public spaces. That's why so many people feel threatened and want to call the cops when they see a black person doing something as benign as waiting for a business meeting to start in Starbucks. So it sounds like racism is the root cause of all of this. We haven't, as a country, confronted racism and really got into the roots of why we code switch, why we feel like we have to straighten our hair in order to get a job, even if we don't want to. That concerns me, because I think the black body is like every other body, a beautiful body, and should be loved and respected, and not feel anxiety as you walk through the world on a daily basis. I know I feel that anxiety because I do want to be accepted by the world in which I live. Code switching can help black people navigate white spaces, but at the end of the day, it's not enough to overcome racism. Code switching and respectability politics don't protect us all the time. 
we're still black.